I'll take that. First of all, we need a plan. One of the things I found out talking to a lot of residents in this district is everyone likes the uh, bike paths, but they lead to nowhere. They're on a bike path, and next thing you know, it stops. There's nowhere to go. Is there a plan for the bike, for our bike paths in this district where we can look down and I can say, I can get on this bike path and go from point A to point B? The answer is no. That's the first thing. What we're lacking here is true leadership and planning. That's what we lack. We put things in place without a plan, and then we all sit in and we're like, oh, great, I took my bike three blocks, but I can't go anywhere. We have to have a plan, stick by it, and everyone has to understand that plan in our district. We have a perfect district to actually set an example, so that's where I would start. What is the plan? If I leave my neighborhood in north, in north uh, up near Sloan's Lake, and I want to get to the uh, Little Man's Ice Cream, how do I get there on a bike path? Someone please show me. <laughs> that's the challenge, it's part of my plan, that's where we start. True leadership, step out of the box. Thank you. I would like to see the creation of more 35th Avenue bike lanes where we had um, roundabouts in, put in. Some people don't like them, but they actually have slow traffic so people can use them safely. We need to look at removing parking for implementing bike lanes. We need to make sure that our sidewalks are built out. There's many neighborhoods in Northwest Denver that don't have sidewalks. And we need to make sure that when we're looking at our, if there's a plan that's actually going to be approved later at the end of this month, it's called PEDS and Trails, that we're actually giving feedback. So that's what re reflective representation is. While we're in this planning process, we need to make sure that you all are at those meetings, you know where they are, and that's something that I will promise to continue doing, is make sure you all are informed when the city is asking for your feedback for the planning initiatives that are going on right now for De Denver Trent Moves, Peds and Trails, that we are actually giving feedback for what we need in Northwest Denver. I want to have to agree with Scott. We need a plan. I'd see it day in and day out. We had cruising back in the 80s. Nobody talked to the police department or the fire department about putting a concrete barrier down the middle of Federal Boulevard. Reason why? If you have a fire on one side of the street and your fire hydrant's on the other side of the street, it makes it a little difficult. Second of all, 35th Avenue, nice, Roundabouts, can't get a fire truck down there, can't make turns. If we're gonna talk about a plan, we involve everybody in the plan. And last time I checked, the safety department wasn't even involved in the first plans to begin with. So that's what calls for new thinking outside the box, quit comparing us to other cities and be Denver. I'm going to echo what's been said before. I think that um, a big part of this is about having a proper plan, and I would go back to what I said before about having a neighborhood planning process where residents get a voice in helping us decide where do we want those bike lanes to go, where do we want um, more complete sidewalks, where do we want to consider taking out parking to make those dedicated bike lanes happen. Um, I do believe that the city's Move Denver plans get us part of the way there. They are about connectivity and seeing our bike lanes and our sidewalks as being connectors in our neighborhoods. We do need to slow traffic. We, we do ne need dedicated bike lanes, um, and we need to complete safe sidewalks. Um, I would also just say that we, well, I'll stop there. <laughs> For, uh... You know, I used to rent at uh, 45th and Federal, um, one of the spots without a sidewalk. Um, so uh, probably about once a week at least, uh, we'd almost get hit by a car trying to walk the dog. Um, so certainly, um, the fixing the sidewalks, uh, with the current system of how it's the individual homeowner's responsibility, uh, without any change to that, we know that the sidewalk system, frankly, will not be completed in a reasonable sum of time. Um, and the city needs to be taking a more active role um, in completing the sidewalk system, uh, working with that homeowner. But um, it's going to fall on the city to be some of that cost uh, if we want to be realistic about it. Uh, one of the mistakes I think the city's made on um, bike lanes is always assuming that they should be uh, where uh, 
the same, the same on the same busiest streets that cars often are. Um, 35th is a good example of the opposite, right? Of you know that, that sort of safe bike route that's around. But often when uh, you're in other areas, it shows uh, you know that tiny little uh, median between a bike and a car just isn't enough. Um, the 35th Avenue uh, roundabouts were a good experiment, but um, honestly, they don't slow traffic in a meaningful way, and th there are a danger for uh, emergency vehicles. Um, I would say that definitely dedicated bike lanes and in our cities, as I work with Denver's most marginalized populations who can't afford public transportation at times, uh, biking is definitely something that we need to, you know, look at and say, we don't have to compromise a certain population safety for the safety of others. And so bike lanes need to continue to be safe. Um, we need to look at, you know, parking that are uh, inside of, Bike, dedicated bike lanes and really um, invest in, you know, we, we say, let's get out of our cars. Denver is a city that's progressive, but there's no solution. Get out of our cars and then do what? Go into bike lanes that have <laughs> parking spaces in them. And so, again, it just really goes back to building a city that's for people and building a city that's based off of uh, people of all different income levels, not just uh, the priority inside of these bike lanes being cars. <laughs> 